Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Marvel Legends Shang-Chi Xiaoling figure. Another movie figure. I'm not particularly interested in any of the movie figures anymore. All the movie designs are very boring to me, but I know a lot of you guys are still into them, so I still review them, plus they come in cases where you get movie figures with other figures. So I don't have a choice. I have to. I have to do it. It's my job. But some of these are actually really solid figures, and so I'm happy to review them for you for those of you who are interested. So let's go ahead and get this one off the stand and take a closer look. And this figure stands just about 15 and a half centimeters, which makes it pretty close to yeah, about six inches, just above that. So pretty much your reasonable scale for a female for this size, for the Marvel Legends. And before we get into the review, let's go ahead and do a question of the day. Have you lost interest in the movie figures? Is it, and if you have, is it because the costume designs are all so samey and tactical and canvas panel-y? That's what it is for me. They all look the same. They're not interesting at all anymore. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this figure. The aesthetics on this thing are halfway awesome. The top half, very nicely done. The detail work on the outfit is kind of incredible. It's all textured, and then the paintwork is phenomenal. Very, very nicely done. Is it absolutely perfect? No, but at this scale, I don't think you're gonna get any better unless you're gonna spend a lot of money, and even then, probably not. The head sculpt and face paint are perfectly reasonable. They're better than most things at this scale and at this price point, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, the only complaint I have, really, aesthetically speaking, is that her hips are horrendous. They look really, really ugly. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to tell, but they don't look good at all, and they don't function well either, so that's a bit of a bummer. And then the other thing is that the arms and hands do not match. The arms are painted this color, and then they don't match the hands. Uh, all of her shirt, or all of her upper body is made out of this kind of translucent white. And that's why they had to paint the arms this color, and it's glossy, and it just doesn't match the hands at all. So that looks really bad. I'm guessing once you pose the figure, that won't be as noticeable but it definitely is a problem. So aesthetically speaking, this figure is only gonna get a seven out of 10 because of this excellent detail work up here. That's a good thing, but around here, around here, we see some serious problems. Now, as far as accessories go, we get the two kind of palm hands that she comes with in the package. Then we get the two fist hands, two martial arts pose hands, and then the one gripping hand for her accessory, which is just the uh, rope with the little spike knife thingy. And so that's fine. Um, no usable accessory, that's just gonna be hanging there. So that's a bit of a bummer, but multiple hands is nice. So uh, eight out of 10, I'll do eight out of 10. That's a lot of hands. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the articulation on this one. We are still using the double ball peg, which is the best way to do next. It's the best way to do a lot of things, and it's super simple and easy. I don't know why they don't do it more, but as you can see, you can move the head around in very many natural ways. It gives you so much more versatility in posing than the standard disc hinge with the ball peg on top. This is very nice. Could they do it any better? Yeah, the ball's still kind of small. Peg's still kind of big, but it still works. It's better than not having it. Uh-oh. Can I get it back in? That's what she said. I can, okay. For the shoulders, better than horizontal, that's pretty good. Full rotation, that's fine. No bicep swivel up there. You do get a better than 90 degree bend in the elbow and that's where you get your swivel. It should be good enough. It's definitely not ideal, but it'll get the job done. For the wrist, you have a swivel and a hinge. Of course, the gripping hand does not have a vertical hinge, only the horizontal once again. For the torso, the diaphragm joint, it doesn't lean forward very far. That's definitely a bit of a bummer. Leans back all the way, side to side all the way. Of course, you get your rotation. It's As far as a single ball peg goes, that's pretty good. They could have done a little better, but it'll be fine. No articulation down here at all, so that's it. That's gonna be pretty limiting. Now for the hips, they are very gappy and ugly, and they only go out to the side that far, and that makes them even gappier. The pivot point is not in the right location. It's too far in, it needs to be farther out so that when you move the legs out, they don't tuck in. They actually pivot out. So that's not that's not good design. It's just a matter of moving that joint. So whoever designed it didn't pay that much attention or didn't know any better, but that definitely could have been easily remedied. And then going forward, they don't go that far, but they go far enough, I guess. And then going back, you don't get any. Thigh swivel is fine. Also, the hips are really loose on this figure. Not as loose as some of the other ones recently, but they aren't tight at all. So I wouldn't be surprised if, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's the tolerances or just this batch of figures or what, but something's different about the last few Marvel Legends, especially some of the movie ones. They're very loose in the hips. 
All right, for the double jointed knee, you get full 180 basically. And it's a little blocky and cumbersome, but that's what it's gonna be, so that's okay. And then for the ankles, all the way back, and pretty far forward, you get a really terrible ankle rocker. It's at a severe angle, and it's very loose, and the foot doesn't really fit on the leg properly. It's just kind of stuck on the end there. I don't know, there's some things that are like, they seem to be trendy. Like, this batch of Marvel Legends has very loose joints. I don't know what's up with that. It's very strange. Okay, or maybe it's just mine and I get really bad luck, which I know is the case, but it shouldn't be on every figure. All right, so articulation on this figure, it's fine, seven out of 10. The hips aren't great, but other things are decent enough. Nothing impressive, nothing too terrible. I guess that's fine. Now time for the final verdict. Uh, as you might expect, this figure is probably not one that most people are gonna want too much, even after seeing the movie. Uh, I'm guessing it's just too bland and plain and samey, just like almost all the other movie figures these days, unless it's like a really unique look or something like that. But this is basically just lady in white shirt with lines, and so it's not a very interesting design as far as I'm concerned. I'm guessing most people share that, and the figure kind of reflects that. So I'm gonna give it an overall rating of 7 out of 10. It's fine, it does a couple things really well. Some things not so well, and everything else is just kind of acceptable. So if you wanted it, pick it up. You won't be impressed, you won't be disappointed, it'll be what it is. And if you didn't want it, then don't bother, you're not really missing out. Alright guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down and let me know why you did in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos almost every single day, and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.